Six million ways to die. Choose one. How would I try for though? Try for test me. So today I'm going to talk about initiation versus non-initiation. I'm going to just give you information. And try to do that non-biasedly. And you can try to make a decision for yourself whether you think one is better than the other. So first I want to say that voodoo, this is just something that's been on my mind that I've kind of been wanting to say. So I'm just going to say it in this video that voodoo is... To me, the best way to describe it is that it is like the Tao. So the Tao is, um, Taoism is Chinese myth, uh, spirituality. And it, within this Chinese spirituality, they would deal with God, the force of God directly, Big G. We're talking like Bondi in Islam, God, you know, the God that they serve, the real big God, Big G, okay? And in Chinese um, Taoism, they say that it is something that you have to experience. It's not something that you can explain. Now, although in Voodoo, we're talking about little G, little gods, um, Loa, there's still aspects of nature, there are aspects of God, just like we are aspects of God. But on the lower portion of the tree, we are still, um, we're still dealing with a force, right? A force in nature, um, but to me, voodoo is something that you have to experience. It is not something that you can explain. So I can sit here and try to tell you like, this is how this spirit presents itself. And this is how this spirit comes to me. And this is how, this is how I know I'm dealing with this spirit specifically because this is how they present. But that's not going to be the same across the board for every person. You could even make somebody's experience more confusing by saying this is how this spirit always presents and it has to be this way and that's more religious and that's why it can kind of get messed up because um that's not going to be accurate for every person so just wanted to put that out there so now i'm just gonna like i said go into talking about um initiation so you have to remember with the slave trade we're talking about like a lot of Africa, a lot of the West Coast of Africa. We're talking Senegal, you know, the Ivory Coast. We're talking about Nigeria. We're talking about Angola. We're talking about uh, Cameroon. We're talking about a lot of places, um, even going down to parts of, you know, South and Central Africa that got involved in the slave trade and came to this part of the world. A lot of slaves. So when you have a place that is strong spiritually you know that birthed the world basically that ancestry can go back to the beginnings of time you're going to have some very heavy spirits and very heavy connections to spirits so then when these people move throughout the world these spirits will follow them because it's almost like part of their ancestry so when all these people are coming from different parts of the west coast of africa north and south to this part of the world those people it changes right so the structure will change because it's based on a lot of spiritual systems are based on the land itself so you know voodoo in haiti is very different than voodoo in benin and togo because the 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 land itself of hispaniola haiti dominican republic influences what type of spirits you're able to deal with, what type of energy you're able to tap into. Um, and that's more shamanistic, but I'm just trying to explain that things change when they change environment. So the structure itself will change. Now we're talking like all these people went to different parts of the diaspora, South America, Brazil, Cuba. We're talking Guyana, like all these different places. Um, America, and structurally things change, okay? And the spirits follow them. So they figured out different structures and ways to work and deal with these spirits based on that. So for example, there's Palo. Now Palo, you have to get initiated. And when you get initiated, typically you go to Cuba to get initiated. And Palo itself is a Spanish word, which means stick. Um, so 
Apollo itself, when you get initiated, like I said, you're going to Cuba. But the thing that you have to remember is Apollo comes from Congo, but Apollo, you can't go to Congo looking for Apollo. Apollo is an African or is a Cuban, inter, a Cuban interpretation of an African, African spiritual system or African spirituality. So it changed. Like I said, you cannot go to, you, you could go to Congo, but you're not going to find Palo itself. It has changed. The structure has changed based on the land and the, and the, and the environment and the culture and the language. All of that influenced how Palo formed. Same thing with Sansa. Sansa is a Puerto Rican interpretation of Dahomean spirituality. So Benin and Togo, those people eventually landed, some of those people landed in Puerto Rico. You know, Sansa itself is more of like a freestyle. They don't really do initiation as much either. Like you kind of deal with a variety of spirits and you can kind of just do your own thing. You don't have to structurally do it a certain way. But what makes Puerto Rican voodoo so distinct is that they deal with certain or specific lineages of, spirit, of spirits that some other ATRs in the diaspora don't deal with, like gypsies and certain types of mermaids and pirate spirits that other um, systems I haven't seen deal with. Um, so like I said, different styles evolved based on the slave trade and the location of the slaves. And not all these people are initiated, okay? Like in Obia, for example, that's another version of um, a hybrid African spiritual system. And these spirits choose you. Like you don't say, I wanna get initiated. If, if, <laughs> if somebody says they can initiate you and Obia, they're scamming you. You do not get initiated by people into Obia. Those spirits specifically choose certain people to initiate them into the system. And those spirits themselves will initiate you into the system. They'll tell you what you need to do and you do these certain things. And it's like, some of it involves like going outside at night under a certain, I don't know, moon phase and lighting a candle and pouring this and that. But those spirits will tell you what to do. And it's, it's different based on, you know, the person. The spirit may tell you to do this, but they may not tell the, the another person that they want to initiate into the system. The same thing, it's based on the person. So, um, and that is honestly very similar to voodoo. So voodoo, I would say, is very similar as well. The loa will kind of tell you if they don't want you initiated, if they want you initiated, they may not outright say it, but they'll guide you to certain people if you're supposed to be. It won't happen if you're not, but that doesn't mean that your connection or experience is better or worse based on if you're initiated or not um and it's very person dependent certain people have certain life paths and certain things they need to accomplish and the low I can see much further in the future than we can as physical human beings so they can see you know what's appropriate for an individual person and kind of guide you in that right direction but there are different styles of ATRs for example, I practice voodoo, B-O-O-D-O-O, -O -O, which is an American style of voodoo. I work with particular loa, but I also practice a form of Gnostic Kabbalah. So that's why my channel is spelled purposely V-O-O-D-O-O, -O -O, so those in the know, know. You know what I'm saying? It's a hybrid. Um, so initiation is good if you want to understand the structure of the system, um, if you are not from like a spiritual background or you know from certain places where people practice this on a regular basis and you've been exposed to it initiation is definitely for that type of individual because it can be it's not something that you just want to jump into um it's not something that you want to just like you know play around with i hate when people say that but it, it is it isn't something that you want to kind of you know dabble with it is definitely something that you want to either commit to or not commit to and structure is important i think for people like that so initiation is important for 
those specific type of people. Um, but I hear a lot of people get into like, people get into tribalism a lot when it comes to ATRs and they'll say, well, that's not how we do it here or that's not how we do it there. And like in jail or prison, there are certain politics you have to abide by based on where you are, right? You can't go to a Cali prison with East Coast politics. It's a different land and the water influenced the way the culture and the people evolve. So it's very different on one side of the world than the other. Like you can't go to, as a Haitian, go to Benin and be like, well, that's not how we do it in Haiti. So you're wrong. Like that doesn't mean people are wrong. It's just how, again, those people have adapted in those specific circumstances on that specific land. So there's that. Um, as far as ATRs go, you can't, like I said, go to someone else's turf and tell them that's not how we do it here or there. You're not picturing the slave trade in your mind. And that's what I think the biggest thing I want to like push when I'm saying that is you need to picture the big picture in your mind when you hear people saying those things. The slave trade was a huge, like, or like a, I don't know, a organization, a huge like operation, that's the word. It was a huge, a huge operation. People didn't just go to Haiti. People didn't just go to the Dominican Republic. People didn't just, or Hispaniola. People didn't just go to Cuba. Like they, slaves went all over. So again, like the structure of that spirituality is going to change based on where those people went. Um, in places like, for example, Suriname, Suriname, they use light box specifically to open a door. So I hear people say light box opens the door to the spiritual world. No, he opens the door to voodoo or the spiritual world that exists within a specific ATR. Okay, it's not the spiritual world of, entire, of its entirety. It is a specific lineage pathway of ATRs that he opens the door to. Not every ATR and spiritual system ever. You're not going to have a Wiccan using, you could, I mean, you probably could, but you're not going to see a Wiccan using Legba to open a door to Hecate or something. You know what I'm saying? It's, you probably could if you're like a strong magician, but that's, that's besides the point. Anyway, in Suriname specifically, they use Legba to open the door, but then they, after that, they use Congo spirits, right? So, you're not, you can't go to those people and say, well, that's not how we do it in Haiti. So you're wrong. Like, that's just how those people have evolved and that system works for them. Okay. Um, the Nago Nation is used in Haitian voodoo and consists of like mostly Orishas, but it's used structurally very different than it is in Ifa. Also uh, in voodoo, you must, uh, most people talk about it like it's like, the voodoo that most people talk about is they're they're talking about one branch on a tree of ATRs, right? So there's specific there are many forms of voodoo that exist. I just think that people need to just like open their minds and like really picture what they're saying in their heads before they say it because there are many forms of voodoo that exist and Ifa is even more international in my opinion than voodoo is, but um you just have to kind of picture things in your mind. In Trinidad, you may um, have an altar for Shango, who is the main Orisha of Trin Trinidad. They call themselves Shango Baptist, but they are also, um, so they'll have like an altar of Shango, but then next to that, they may have an altar for an Indian god, like India, the country, um, because many Trinidadians are culturally mixed with, in, um, uh, with India, a lot of Indians ended up there during the slave trade as well that's why um but i'm just saying like there's so many different versions of atrs and you can't say well this person is wrong because they had their altar set up with this spirit and this spirit and they don't go together like you may not know where they're from they may do things structurally different than they do in this specific island or this specific place that's, but this is this is showing you the big picture of Africa and ATRs and how broad it is. But that's why they tried to put black people under one word and one system because it's just too overwhelming, right? 
Meanwhile, you have people in the hotel community who lump everyone together doing the same thing, saying, oh, well, everybody, there's the same skin color, so they're the same. And that further limits your understanding of the continent of Africa, how diverse it is, and it also makes you very predictable. Like if you say, um, say like, okay, so say this is how it makes you predictable because say I'm in a, a, in a spiritual beef with somebody who practices voodoo. I know exactly what spirits they're gonna try to use against me. Very predictable. Say I get in a spiritual beef with somebody who practices Ifa. I know exactly what spiritual defenses they're going to use to try to protect themselves. Very predictable. Um, so you have to like, but then you have somebody say, like I said, from Suriname, you don't ever hear people talking about Suriname because it's not known. But you're not gonna be, if you get into a spiritual beef with somebody from Suriname, you're first gonna have to look up what, where Suriname is, because I'm sure people, it's not common, it's not common knowledge where that is. You're gonna have to then look up what is a maroon, because those are the type of people that practice ATRs in Suriname. And then you're gonna have to figure out the rest. Well, what, what kind of African spirituality do they, do they practice? And then you're not even gonna know specifically what type of spirits they're gonna be working with or what type of spirits they'd hit you up with because it's not common knowledge. So locking yourself into I'm black and I practice this specific lineage of a certain ATR locks you into being very predictable and non-flexible. So that's why, me specifically, why I like to practice voodoo, V-O-O, D-O-O, because I can incorporate other spiritual practices into my structure or setup that I have. But then also you have to remember de demoralization, which I can make an entire video on its own of just demoralization, but demoralization also comes into the picture where you can't process information correctly or the information that you process or access is all emotion based so for example i would say a lot of people get triggered by some of my videos by the way that i talk they can't tell if i'm black if i'm white doesn't it makes them not want to listen to my information just because of that that is demoralization and that literally limits you spiritually because like i don't understand how you think you're going to evolve or even like grasp spiritual concepts if you can't get past the way someone talks or the past the way someone presents information to you. If you are a true, this is, that's why the Moors were so badass because they took, they were open to everything. They opened themselves up to different, they went to other countries, they opened them up themselves up to other people's systems. If they liked it, they would incorporate some of that stuff in their practices. So that's why they were so powerful because they did not have a demoralized mind. So um, again, back to saying when a lot of people in America make the mistake of saying black, you're black, so you're the same. Like if you went to Nigeria and you told a Hausa person, a, a person from a Hausa tribe, that they are the same thing as somebody who is Igbo because they are both black in quotation marks. Like nobody would say that. They would automatically know that you're like not from there. And you don't understand the culture because that's not how it works in anywhere but America. Um, so initiation doesn't, I would also like to say that in my opinion, initiation doesn't mean as much to a serious practitioner as you think it does. It is more important for newer practitioners who don't come from that background. There are, I don't know, there's these like, this like I don't know bravado ego stance that a lot of people are taking right now thinking that like getting initiated into Ifa, Lukumi, Haitian voodoo, what have you, the main ones that's what people are doing, um, think that that gives you stripes in that world and that doesn't work that way either. <laughs> like you're just initiated, you know the structure. Um, in my world, initiation is for solar spiritual system specifically, not lunar, because you are not going to be able to decode abstract information by yourself. 
All lunar systems are a form of shamanism. A shaman will observe the world and he decodes nature in the physical world. Solar systems go beyond the physical world and are more um, universal forces. So that's something that you're not gonna be able to decode on your own. If you're a religious, you should go ahead and get initiated. It will teach you the structure, which is very important. Again, like you definitely shouldn't be just messing with certain spirits and doing certain things if you don't even understand the structure of a system. Like initiation is very important for newer practitioners. Highly, 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 cannot say that enough. But most people are getting scammed. For instance, in Ifa, the main place that people go to is um, that should the main place that people should be going to to get initiated is Latin America. Ifa in places like Cuba, Brazil, they there's it's I would say that their experience is more similar to an American experience, whereas Nigeria is not. Like Brazil, Cuba is more close to the American experience in everyday life. So I would, in our everyday life. So I would say that those are the places that people really should be going to if you're wanting to get initiated in Ifa. But some people choose to go to Nigeria. It's just, it's different. The setup is very different there. Um, initiation, like I said, is structure. You're paying for structure. So you're paying to, for example, in Haitian Buddha, you're paying for somebody to tell you, this is how you set up for Rada. This is how you set up for Petro. This is how you set up for Gede. This is how you set up for Nago. This is when you invoke the spirit. This is when you invoke this spirit. You don't do this with this spirit, etc. These are the recipes that you use to deal with certain spirits. You're paying for somebody to tell you that for forming houses in Ifa, you're paying for somebody to get you your warriors to crown you certain Orisha. That's what you're paying for. Or, you know, your ability to teach, you're paying for that, the, for, the, for the okay to teach. But not getting an initiated, not getting initiated doesn't mean that you don't have the same relationship with spirits. There are many paths within the HRs in the diaspora. Until next time.